Welcome back as we move on to look at the servicing of filters. Filters and strainers will eventually become clogged as they trap more and more dirt particles. For this reason, they will require some attention in the form of cleaning, or more commonly, renewal. Replacing or servicing strainers and filters are not difficult tasks, but there are some points that you should be aware of. Safety is the first point. It is never a good idea to work on a live machine. So, before you start doing any task on a system, make sure that it has been isolated. Next, keep in mind that hydraulic oil can be extremely hot after a system has been operating. For this reason, it is wise to allow time for the oil to cool before you start working on it. Use appropriate gloves if, for some reason, you are forced to work on the unit whilst it is still hot. For purposes of demonstration, let us look at the various procedures involved in replacing the strainers and filters on our training model system. We shall begin with the breather. Step one is always the same in any operation, and that is clean the area around which you are going to work. Even if it looks clean, there will be dust in the area, and we don't want it going into the tank. The new parts that we shall be fitting are all included in a breather kit. The parts comprise a cap, complete with a neck adapter, a neck strainer, and a gasket. The task begins by removing the mounting screws. These should be placed in a suitable container, which will lessen the chance of their dropping inside the tank. All parts, including the strainer, are then removed and discarded. The area is carefully wiped clean, making sure not to allow dirt to fall into the opening. Note the order of assembly. First the gasket, then the strainer. The adapter neck is then fitted, and the whole unit is secured with the set screws. In order to ensure a leak-free joint, the screws should be tightened in a star pattern sequence. The task, as you saw, is not at all complicated. Let us move on to the suction strainer, which is a little more involved. The suction line strainer is deep inside the tank, and to access it, we shall have to remove the suction pipe and its tank adapter plate. Once again, we must make sure that the area is clean before we start removing things. The suction pipe connection to the pump is first loosened. Note that two spanners are used. One provides support and prevents the adapter from turning, whilst the other supplies force to loosen the connecting nut. Next, the tank adapter plate is loosened. The set screws should be placed into a container to prevent loss and from falling into the tank. The suction line is then removed as a complete unit from the tank and placed into a suitable, clean container. To prevent dirt or dust entering the tank whilst we attend to the strainer, we shall cover the opening. The suction strainer, as can be seen, is attached to the end of the pipe. It is removed simply by unthreading it. As a general rule, we would fit a new suction strainer element of the correct type, obtained from your hydraulic component supplier. When absolutely necessary, it is permissible to clean a strainer. This may be achieved by carefully agitating the element in a degreasing solvent. An airline is used to blow dry the element before it can be reinstalled. A careful inspection of the strainer must be given to ensure that it is not clogged or damaged. If the mesh screen has rips or holes in it, then the element is not to be refitted. The new 
or washed unit is simply screwed carefully onto the suction pipe. The complete assembly is ready to be reinstalled into the tank. Remove the protective cover. Position the gasket and then carefully reinstall the suction line. In order to maintain proper alignment of parts, the suction line connector should be first threaded by hand onto the pump inlet. Next, the adapter plate fixing screws are loosely threaded into their locations. Now, using two spanners, as demonstrated, the pipe connection to the pump is secured firmly. The plate screws can next be tightened. Tightening should be done progressively to prevent the plate from buckling, thereby lessening the chance of a leak. The task is completed when any spilled oil has been wiped up. In the next demonstration, we shall replace the pressure line filter element. This is the filter that traps small dirt particles that have bypassed the pump or that have been generated by the pump itself. The replacement of this filter is very simple. The filter bowl will be full of oil, so we begin by placing a catcher tray beneath the filter. Remember that the oil may be hot, so where applicable use the necessary hand protection. The filter bowl is simply unscrewed and removed from the filter head. The element can be discarded. Using a safe solvent, the bowl is washed to remove all traces of dirt and sediment from within. The bowl is dried with the shop airline. This will also ensure that any grit or dust is removed. When clean and before installation, inspect the threads. Damage to the threaded section could result in possible leakage. The new filter element is next obtained. It is very important that the replacement is of the size and type specified. Fitting the incorrect element could result in serious damage to the system. Position the element with its open end upward into the filter head. It will locate onto the central intake baffle. The bowl is then carefully threaded into position by hand. A final tightening is given with the spanner. Let us now replace the return line filter. As always, it is vital that we work as cleanly as possible to prevent dirt or dust from entering the system. Note the use of O-ring type seals on this filter. A large seal is fitted to the filter head and a smaller seal fits around the bypass baffle. In our particular unit, the filter element is of the cartridge type. It is important that we select the proper replacement filter according to the manufacturer's details. The replacement filter element is positioned into the housing. Next, the large O-ring is removed and wiped clean. The seating is also wiped clean. A coating of clean hydraulic oil will help prevent the O-ring twisting when the cap is tightened. The cover is now cleaned. Note that a smaller O-ring is situated in the cover. We must make sure that this small inner O-ring is in its position before the cap is replaced. The cap is now repositioned and tightened securely. As always, the task is completed after cleaning up any oil spillage. Having renewed one or all of the filters in a system, the unit should be operated and the filter areas checked to make sure that there are no leaks. At this time, we are sure you will agree that there is nothing at all difficult about replacing strainers or filters. 
The important factors are that you use the correct replacement parts, that you work safely, and that your work is clean. After the break, we shall look at some general maintenance procedures. <music>